Hey everybody, welcome to a live stream we're doing on our phone because the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis, is seen here tonight in the Carolinas. And you can see on the screen right now that we are producing planetary K index almost off the charts up to a K9. And what that means in part is that the Aurora Borealis view line is so far south into portions of the United States that you can actually see it here in the Carolinas with your naked eye. So I've just moved into darkness. I'm going to lower my voice a little bit. It is midnight now. It is midnight. And I'm going to try to show you what I am seeing in the greater Charlotte area. Now, the trick is, and hopefully you're able to see what is essentially my camera app right now. It has dimmed down a little bit in the past half an hour or so. But if you take a long exposure photo, and my phone does it for about six seconds, you'll be able to capture some of the pink and maybe some of the green colors that are happening. Hopefully you're able to see this photo that I just took standing here in my yard where you can make out some of the the pink color visible there in the sky. Again, I'm seeing kind of in a really dark spot. You can see this is what it actually looks like real time to my eyes. But if I ask my phone once again to do a long exposure, this is now the first time here on this Tuesday night going into Wednesday morning that I've been able to not only capture a picture, but actually seeing it in the last few minutes, uh, naked eye here where I am near Matthews, North Carolina. And we're going to look in a moment at uh, some of the pictures you all have been sharing with us. Uh, but just to show you some of the pictures I took in the last little bit, this was a photo I took at 1142 tonight. And again, looking down my street, you could see in that north, northwestern sky, the pink of the Aurora Borealis, or the Northern Lights, depending on what you want to call it. Again, this is about a six second exposure. I'm going to walk to that same spot. Hopefully my Wi-Fi goes this far because I just want to show you how fluid is by space weather, a solar storm. And so if I bring my live camera back right now, this is that same spot where I was just ugh, 20 minutes ago and now it's gone. It's, it's gone in terms I can't see with my naked eye. We're taking a couple of long exposure photos here to see if it's still visible to the camera. All that extra time to pull in the lighting. No, no, I was hoping to show it to you on the stream. By the time I got the stream kind of all set up and ready to go, uh, you can see kind of how that's already gone and disappeared. So let's, let's look at some of the photos that we've been getting from our Carolina weather groupies uh, all across the Carolinas because this is quite the show. This also gives me an opportunity to step back into my warmer garage. But Valdez, uh, Amy sending in this photo, uh, looking towards Table Rock. Look how bright these colors are. Again, this is probably long exposure photography. And I'm gonna close my garage. You'll probably be able to hear that in the background. But that's okay. Long exposure photography to see a solar storm of this rarity is very impressive. Um, let's see, Hollywood, South Carolina. This is again, you can see some of the stars in the sky there and some of that pinkish color, even green at times. Now, Dallas, North Carolina, what a beautiful ground shot this is. We also know Brad Panovich, Chief Meteorologist at WCNC Charlotte, has their station TV camera there in Dallas. That's 1,500 feet above the ground or so, and he was able to see magnificent views. Uh, Lenore here at about 10 o'clock. It was the western North Carolina region where we first started to get reports tonight of the Aurora Borealis. Southern Shores, North Carolina. Lots of pink we're seeing tonight in that northern sky. Island of Palm, so even down towards the Charleston area. Again, you gotta find a dark enough spot without too much uh, lighting coming in. You can see this photo here, that's from Daniel. Outside of Fort Bragg. You know that hopefully this is a pretty dark area, some street lights there, but didn't mess up this photo. Uh, that came in to us at the Carolina Weather Group from Patty couple more pictures from the Charleston area. Thanks to everybody who's been sending these. Now this one from Bradley and King. Look how vertical that is, right? It's up and down. That 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 streak of pink there in the sky really stands out. And we've been seeing that. We've been seeing these shots 
kind of these rays that go up and down. I'll tell you, I don't know why they're vertical, but I'm going to try to find out and maybe get you an answer on this week's edition of Carolina Weather Group podcast. Uh, Deborah and Vail. Wow, look at it again. Again, it's kind of concentrated right there at the center of the screen, or or maybe that's just where the phone was best focusing. Uh, and these things come and go. Again, in the few minutes that I went outside and got the live stream going and back again, it kind of dimmed down where I was. But this is a photo here. Again, you can kind of tell it's long exposure because something in the sky streaked a little bit, but that doesn't take away from the beauty that Reed saw there in Lexington, South Carolina. What a magnificent view. Great Falls. Look how bright this one is in Great Falls. Again, uh, we probably are looking at several seconds worth of photography here to really saturate those colors uh, but what a great high transmission power lines are probably a very dark space uh, to be able to go out and get them hickory north carolina checking in with us on our facebook page bluffington south carolina here's robin a view partially obscured by a house so many of us are looking right here at the horizon on the north northwest sky that it's obscured by trees or or other homes that's certainly my situation um and it gets a little tricky to find a spot that really gets you a good view um here's a good view we can see some stars we can see some of the pink there that's from travis in bellwood and on and on and on and on and on so uh how long is this going to last for well there's a chance that we will be able to see it tomorrow. So back over to NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center. Yeah, that's right. NOAA has a Space Weather Prediction Center because we need to know not only what's happening on Earth, but what's impacting Earth from the uh, the, the universe around us. Uh, and in this case, solar radiation. And you can see in their official forecast for tomorrow, very similar to what's happening tonight. So there is a chance that we could continue to see uh, the, the show continue into Wednesday night. Now, we do have to caution that we, we think we are going to see uh, some more of the solar radiation, the solar storm arriving during the daytime hours here on the East Coast on Wednesday, but there's a chance that we could be back in the same boat on Wednesday, and how cool uh, would that be? Let me see if this is the animation I watched earlier, but it was just really cool to kind of watch the northern lights spin around the Arctic Circle, spin around Canada. I think this is it, and it kind of plays out over time. Uh, it's a forecast, but it's a forecast for today, and obviously a good portion of today is now over as we move past the midnight hour, but watch what happens. So here was your Tuesday, and now here comes what I think will be Wednesday, uh, Tuesday night into Wednesday, and you can kind of just see, if this is the animation, I think it is, how it flares up. There it goes, right there. Bam! That's the Aurora forecast, and you can see this is a percentage of being able to likely see that Aurora, of course, very likely over Canada, very likely over portions of the United States along the northern half. But down here in the Carolinas, uh, I mean, to what we are witnessing tonight, uh, we have not seen probably since that storm that came, that solar storm that came in 2024. Four, if my memory best serves. Best explanation I've seen tonight, and I think uh, Brad is that the solar storms kind of come in, oh, not you, Rock. Uh, they come in cycles. So we are right now in a period where solar activity is higher than in the grand scheme of things. I'm talking about, a, you know, over multiple years. Da, 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 da. Here it is. Uh, for the moment, we have reached, and I'm reading now, a G5 level storm. That is the most extreme level of, uh, of a solar storm. Not as strong as the Gannon storm of May 10th, 2024, but this solar storm is packing a punch. We still have two more yet to go. Let's hope we get a small break between them to allow the power grids to reset. Because, yeah, as is these northern lights are, they are a strain on communications, on the power is radiation coming in from the sun. Uh, Dr. James Spann joined us at one point from NOAA on the Carolina Weather Group. I'm going to dig up that sound for this week's podcast. And uh, he talked about how uh, they are using NOAA GOES satellites and other satellites to monitor uh, not only what happens down here on Earth, and that's what you're used to seeing from those weather satellites, but they point back up into space to watch for the arrival of these things. These are magnificent photos uh, that you guys are posting on, on Twitter. And here again, I mentioned this earlier in the stream, but Brad using that Dallas camera there uh, to keep an eye. And you can see some of the greens that he captured, I think, around the 11 o'clock hour or so. So uh, let me see here real fast. It's not too often that I do these streams on my phone. Um, but I maybe now just turned on comments. I thought they were on the whole time. My apologies. 
So if you want to drop me a comment with where you're watching from, uh, if you've been able to see them, I think I've now just enabled live commenting on this stream. Um, again, coming to you on my phone here at this midnight hour. Uh, I thought the comments were on earlier. I apologize for that delay, but I would love to hear from you. And uh, let me go back over to our uh, Facebook page, maybe, perhaps, uh, and just see if we've gotten any additional photos that have maybe come in in the last few minutes. Let me get over to our Facebook page, where so many of you have been commenting. Um, and uh, I'll also tell you, Northern Lights, Aurora, as far as I know, the terms mean the same thing. I'm going to check that out tomorrow. Um, I checked Google uh, to see which terms more people were using in order to title this, <laughs> this YouTube stream, something that would be real search friendly. Northern Lights was winning out over Aurora on the Google trends. Uh, again, there's that picture from Amy, real bright, uh, great looking shot there. Uh, as uh, I'm going to pause here a second and just try to check to see if any of you guys have dropped any comments. Even after I'm live, if you want to chime in, let me know where you are, what you've seen. Uh, we'd love that. And then if you want to head over to our Facebook page, you can find us on X as well, too. You could always drop us a photo. We're going to use some of these back on our regular Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern podcast, which streams right here on YouTube, but also wherever you get podcasts, uh, because this is just this is just magnificent. You know, we love weather. But something about this crossover with space nerds, and in this case, space weather, really, really just kind of hones it all in. So uh, if you didn't get a chance to view it on Tuesday night, there's a chance we may be able to see some of the Aurora, the Northern Lights again on Wednesday. Just uh, kind of stay tuned if you want to check out swpc.noaa.gov. That is the uh, NOAA Space Weather Prediction Center. And I'll also tell you, I mentioned this before, let me look right now. There's this thing called Goes Flux, and I'm remembering it from 2024, and I gotta go refresh my memory on it, but this Goes X-ray flux thing. So Goes is the weather satellites we use to track hurricanes and all sorts of weather. But if you Google Goes X-ray flux, you'll get this chart here, and you can see these X-ray levels. And I remember in 2024 seeing that they had spiked, just kind of like we saw them spiking here uh, a few hours earlier. And so that's kind of a good indication if you're sitting inside where it's warm and you're wondering, hey, should I be going outside? Is, is, is the show pretty good right now? Uh, there is some correlation here to this data that I'm pretty sure uh, Dr. James Spann, uh, I remember him explaining it to me on, on the Carolina Weather Group previously. And like, like I said, I'm going to go dig up that sound uh, and then have it readily available for our uh, our podcast on uh, Wednesday night at 9. Uh, I'm sure you could probably find it in our in our YouTube channel even sooner than I can. Uh, but again, I know this is this is pertinent here to, uh, to track, and you can kind of see how it goes up and down. But the x-rays coming in from the sun, essentially these weather satellites are looking back out into space. And that is what is being represented here. Uh, and you can see how, you know, maybe these are typical days, but then we start getting a couple spikes here. Uh, leading up to the ongoing solar storm right now that at one point did reach G5, 5 out of 5, uh, and then and, and K9. These are all just abbreviations to really say this storm is quite powerful, and that is why we are seeing the Northern Lights, a.k.a. the Aurora Borealis, uh, in portions of the Carolinas, not only with long exposure photography, but also uh, with naked eye in some places. So, uh, you can head on over to our YouTube channel. It's, it's where you're watching right now, Carolina Weather Group. And uh, we will be back Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern time for our regular show. Oh, wow, look at all those ads. There we go. Thanks, YouTube. Uh, and uh, we will be there talking not only about the ongoing solar storm, but also the snow we saw this week. What a crazy week of Carolina weather. It has been unconventional of sorts, and uh, we'd love to have you back for that conversation. But for now, I'm James Briarton in Charlotte. Thanks for hanging out with me on this uh, mobile YouTube stream, and uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Have a good night.